Welcome to the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast, where we meet entrepreneurs in the digital health and fintech spaces. Together, we'll hear real-world stories, gain practical insights, and discover the amazing things happening behind the scenes of thriving early-stage companies making their mark. It's time for the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another installment of the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. We are in episode three today. My name is Kenny Jang, host of the podcast, and today I'm fortunate to be sitting across the interwebs from um, Blake, who is the co-founder and chief product officer of Inbox Health. Um, prior to that, he's been uh, starting Inbox Health. He's been uh, in the finance and product management area, eventually working on consumer financing products for elective procedures in healthcare. Um, and that experience is apparently what led him to the founding of Inbox Health as he recognized the struggle um, in the doctor's offices to collect money from patients, etc. cetera. Um, the the Connecticut-based startup um, really is trying to pioneer within this digital health space. And I'm glad to have you with us here today, Blake. Welcome. Thanks, Ken. Great to be here. So um, first, let us uh, learn a little bit about your story and your background, Blake, um, and you know how you got interested in in the entrepreneurship community and healthcare in particular. It's kind of interesting. I, I in college I studied musicology, which is basically just music history and theory. So it had nothing to do with anything that I'm doing now. Uh, but I do think that you know it's part of my uh, creative streak, maybe. Uh, and then uh, as I left school, I started getting involved in finance, um, commercial financing for doctor's offices, uh, and then eventually working in a product management role on a consumer elective procedure financing product. So, mm. you know, you go into the, the plastic surgeon and you need financing for that procedure. Um, that's sort of where I, I sort of was introduced to the issues that uh, traditional doctors, non-elective procedures were actually facing as they start, started to become interested in these financing products for their practices. Um, you know, you didn't really want the cardiologist offering a, an interest-free loan to the old lady who needed who needed her her heart taken care of. Uh, you kind of wanted that problem to be solved in another way. So that's sort of where I got got the inkling for Inbox Health and started down that path. Um, so it was, it was an interesting winding road, but uh, I'm happy with where it led. Interesting. And so the iteration of Inbox Health today is you are attempting to redesign this entire patient payment experience with the doctor's office. And I think anyone watching here that has dealt with any doctor's office um, can uh, sympathize or empathize with that pain point in particular, right? Um, that unending correspondence. And it's just confusing. It's time consuming. It's just a headache. Um, and you're trying exactly. to unravel all of that, basically, right? Yeah, and it's it's funny because our our customer is the doctor's office uh, because they're the ones losing money and who need need to solve the problem most. <laughs> yes. But the patients are also benefiting greatly because the experience on their side, as everyone knows, right. is just terrible. I mean, it's right. it lacks any transparency. You never know how much it's going to cost, uh, and people have much higher deductibles now than they ever have before. Uh, so it's it's a growing problem for both patients and their doctors, and the doctors are just the ones willing to pay to fix it. Wow, that's interesting to hear that. that it's the doctors that actually care about it in the end, although it's probably wallet driven. <laughs> um, so um, let's go back to the beginning. How old is Inbox Health? How, how far have you guys been into this uh, whole venture? So we started in April 2014, so we're going on about two years now. Gotcha. Um, and we launched our first product uh, January 2015. So we've been uh, out in the market for about a year and a half now. Um, how many people do you have on your team right now? Uh, we have four software engineers um, and two people in the sales and support roles, and then our CEO my, and myself are are sort of outside that that group there. So I think gotcha. eight total. Eight total. And then um, I love founder stories. One of the things that we talked about uh, in the pre-call uh, area is that you have an interesting connection or a long-time connection with one of the co-founders. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think it was fourth grade. I went to his birthday party. Um, and. It, all throughout high school, we were we were involved in music together. We did all the musicals at, in, in high school, um, and we fell out of touch a little bit in college. We went different ways. Um, but after school, he had been working at at 3M. They had a healthcare division. It's called 3M HIS, uh, and he was working there. Uh, and I had come up with this idea, and I'm more on the design side, product management side. And, 
he's like one of those kids who he was programming when he was he was in diapers and uh, I always thought he was kind of a nerd, but uh, nerds become uh, infinitely more valuable later in life, um, especially when you're in the startup field. So we started working together on the on the product. But yeah, we have quite quite the history, uh, mostly a musical history, but it's become more of a technology history lately. That's funny. Um, yeah, nerds win in the end sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, let's go back to your product. So is is your tell us a little bit about the actual service that you are actually delivering? Is it a service as uh, software as a service? Is it a, a consultation? What, what, what is it? Yeah, it's a software as a service platform that the doctors subscribe to, and it's really what we call a patient revenue management platform. So it encompasses a lot of the patient experience, and what we really like to do is start the patient's uh, payment experience far earlier than most other products do. So we start with the patient at check-in before they ever come to the office. Mm. We're actually sending them text messages and emails, reminding them about their visit and then letting them check in online. And then as part of that check-in process, we educate them about their benefits. So we actually connect to insurance companies, pull back data from the insurance companies and help them understand what the costs are going to be before they go into the office. So then a lot of what we ha see as the problem in the healthcare space is, is expectations are never set. Um, and it's very difficult to do. So as the patients are coming in through Inbox Health, they're actually, they're actually having their cost expectations set. They really understand how their insurance works, what it's going to cover, what it's not going to cover. And so they go into the office a lot more prepared. And with Inbox Health, they've often already paid for a good portion of the procedure beforehand. Right. And on the backside, we have this platform that lets the doctor's staff manage the entire process, makes it really easy and automated. Um, but also makes the, the whole experience a lot more digital friendly for the, for the patient. So it's, it's just a better experience on both sides of the table. Nice. And so what's the average sweet spot for your customer? Is it a solo practitioner? Is it a medical, you know, group practice, you know? Yeah, so as, as we started out, and I think this is probably typical for a lot of new SaaS companies, we've started with smaller groups, um, especially in the healthcare space. I think a lot of digital health companies can probably uh, relate to the experience of uh, integration woes. Uh, so it, it's a very integration-heavy industry. There's a lot of powerful, large players um, in the EHR, electronic health records companies. Um, they really own the data and own the space, and working with them can be very difficult as a new startup. So starting small lets us sort of get our feet wet, get the product tested, right. uh, ramp it up. Um, and now we're sort of in this, in this middle ground where we're working with six to eight practitioners, so six to eight doctors in the office, um, and looking to grow towards a larger customer. And we're starting that, those conversations now with some of the larger enterprise uh, healthcare players. So, you know, you think there's, you know, everywhere from the doctor around the corner to, you know, Yale Medical Group or Kaiser out in California that are, you know, hundreds of doctors uh, across an entire state. So that's really where we'd like to end up ultimately. But, you know, I think building the product and getting your getting your uh, foot in the door is easiest in the smaller groups, nice. especially in the healthcare space. So how much traction have you gotten to date? Um, and how many customers? How are, you, how are you guys faring right now? So we have over 150 practices that are using our product um, all across the country. Uh, definitely a little bit heavier in the Northeast where we're located, but um, a lot of what we've done with the smaller groups has been uh, SEO conversions, uh, Google AdWord conversions, and that's just been nationwide, and we've been able to quickly get uh, over 100 customers. So it's great to have people using the software. 600,000 patients have come through it. Um, so it's, it's pretty heavily used, and, and it helps you sort of uh, prove out that model as nice. you go into the larger system. So larger if you are sales. using pay-per-click advertising for lead generation, the actual um, subscription cost must be, um, it's not a high value, high dollar product, not in the five digit, six digit range, right? What's the average right. cost for a practice to adopt your services? So for most small practices, they're paying about $100 a month. Um, so it's in a small practice setting, it's definitely a lower, a lower ticket cost. But as we sort of built out, built out our product a little bit more and are moving upstream in terms of going to larger clients, it's definitely something that's increasing. Like we're starting to see now, larger clients are in the twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollar a month range. So it's definitely something that's shifted over time. And it's always kind of interesting as we, you know, we're a, a new company. We're talking to venture capitalists all the time, and you know, over the the period of time that we're talking to them, things will change pretty greatly. So it's it's always interesting trying to to tell that story in a in a convincing way to make sure that they understand how how things have to shift, especially in the healthcare space, because it's, it's a very unique space. Um, things can take a little bit longer than in other spaces. Um, but I think that if you have the right investor partners who sort of understand that digital health space, I think that they can wrap their heads around a little bit better. Right. 
And so are you actually able to acquire the customer on the internet and get them onboarded without any of your team members actually picking up the phone or getting involved? Yeah, we are. Uh, we didn't think that we'd be able to. I think a lot of people doubted that that was possible in healthcare. But yes, we, we do that more often than anything else. Um, That's pretty cool. We, we spent a lot of time building out an onboarding process that was entirely digital. And uh, one of the great tools that we actually utilize for uh, sort of helping with that process is called Intercom, which is a, a great support tool that's very, uh, you know, engaging for the customer to bringing them into the process and having someone there for them mm -hmm. all the time. So when they get stuck at that step and they have that question, you know, about how, you know, how many doctors can I have, you know, can I do this, can I do this? Uh, we can we can walk them through it via chat, and it saves us a lot of time and lets us onboard a lot more people. Without, you know, we don't really have a sales team. Right, we're, we're a small company. We have one one support person who really can't manage all of the onboarding process. So it's right. it's been great to have that digital, but it's certainly something like now that we are into the larger groups, we're doing you know on site training, sure, sure. Uh, frequent training webinars. So that too shifts as you go. But definitely when we were starting out, that was the way to go. I think um, especially for the clear majority of smaller practices, being able to sell online is just um, a huge game changer, right? It's basically it's, actually, it's a competitive edge in a way because it's yes. so, so rare in the healthcare space that th there are groups that just want that easy access. Uh, and there were one of the few people who can provide that to them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you, you've got that sweet story where you can go just walk onto Shark Tank and say, uh, I just need more money to scale. <laughs> <And then laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, awesome. So tell me a little bit about um, you know, the support network that you actually have. Um, you obviously um, are doing really well. And I'm, uh, typically behind great entrepreneur stories, there are either mentors or a network that's installed um, do you have um, that type of support system um, located where you are? First of all, where are you guys located and operating out of? So we're located in Bridgeport, Connecticut, right downtown. Um, and it's a very up-and-coming city. Um, one of the best things about it is that we're, we're very close to New York, Boston, and the insurance companies, which are all in Hartford. Yeah. Um, but we have cheaper rent by far and lower salaries by far than any of those major metro areas. So it's, it's kind of got the best of both worlds. Yeah. So are you seeing other peer digital health companies um, in that area? Because it seems to be that medical, healthcare, pharma, um, this, this area, this geography tends to be um, high concentration of those type of entities. I definitely feel like New York is becoming the hub for digital health and we're very close to it. Um, Connecticut itself, I think, um, one of the great things in Connecticut is, is Connecticut Innovations uh, and digital health has been huge for them. Yeah. Uh, having Yale University, obviously biotech becomes a little bit more of a focus with some of the um, academic hubs, uh, but there's definitely also a growing digital health scene both in Connecticut and especially in New York City. Gotcha. Um, and then you've got an actual acquisition under your belt already as an entrepreneur, right? We do, yeah. And I think that that goes back to the support systems. Uh, we were part of a program called Startup Health, um, which is a, a sort of a long-term incubator program. We've been in it for the entire two years, um, and Cake Health was in it as well. And you know, we've been talking to the founder of Cake Health for a long time, and it, it was sort of a natural fit. Um, Cake Health... What Cake Health was is basically meant for healthcare. Inbox Health is aimed at the doctor and the practitioner, and Cake Health is actually focused on the patient itself, right? So it's a, exactly, it's a great yeah. So, I mean, Cake Health was helping the patients sort of catalog and organize their health expenses. Right. Um, so, by connecting that with our platform that was helping the doctors uh, get better at digitally connecting to patients and billing patients digitally, uh, connecting those two things lets us sort of spread the wealth. So, the patient then who is uh, going to a doctor's office that uses Inbox Health is able to uh, not just pay their bills to that doctor, but mm. pay any bill to any doctor. And so for us, it's sort of naturally a lead generation um, machine because it's it's just sending uh, Inbox Health right into these other doctor's offices that they're connecting with. Um, and on the patient consumer side, it's super convenient. So it just makes our product that much more valuable, both to the doctor and then to the patient. Who you know, sort of a, our customer by by default, as their relationship with the, the provider makes them our customer. Have you learned anything about that acquisition process? If you were to talk to other peer entrepreneurs right now in a similar space and spot, uh, what's your biggest advice about that? Uh, I think uh, it's it's tricky. Uh, we actually were. Um, 
sought for an acquisition by another company as well, and so and that didn't that didn't pan out. Um, and I think it's all about fit. Uh, you know, the products really have to be the perfect fit, and the teams have to be a perfect fit. Um, and I think that you just have to be patient and not make any rash decisions. Uh, uh, it has to be perfect because this is like you know your company is your baby. Um, there's only going to be one time when you can sell it. Um, and it may not ever be right to sell it. So I think it's just got to be perfect. And it's, it's just I'd advocate for, for patience and, and uh, seek out advice of, of wise people and, and talk about it a lot before you make any moves. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting, an interesting uh, thing to think about selling, selling a company that you've built and yourself. Where were, where were their operations located? Were they by you or there's some geographic somewhere else? Well, sir, they were in San Francisco, um, but we didn't bring on any of their staff. Uh, other than Rebecca herself as an advisor, um, we were really just acquiring the product and the technology behind the product. Um, and that was what was important to us, and that's what they uh, were set up to do. So it's, that was a little bit of an interesting acquisition, and it really stemmed from uh, our mutual relationship with Startup Health. Nice, nice. Well, it sounds like you guys are on a fantastic ride. Um, are you ready, Blake, for our lightning round of questions as we close out the interview? I think I am, yeah. Okay. So the first one is, as a startup entrepreneur, I think everyone in this lifestyle understands that we only have 24 hours a day. You probably feel that that hard stop, <laughs> the limitation, the human limitation there. Uh, productivity, obviously, is something that we always are trying to up the game on. What digital productivity tool, resource, approach, or service um, has been uber helpful for you and your team in this go-around for this uh, iteration of your startup? So I think there's two things that I think a lot of people are using. Uh, one is Slack. Um, and Slack is really the heart of our entire organization. Um, everything in our Inbox Health app connects to it. When a new customer signs up, when they have a question, oh, wow. everything goes to Slack. Uh, when a payment is made by a patient, it goes through Slack. All of it goes through Slack. Um, and it really lets us connect and catalog everything that we do. There's a few other companies that are doing similar things. And I, I think having something like that today is essential. When you're starting a company, start it out with a tool like that. Uh, you have this opportunity to, with a fresh start to have this uber productive company and Slack or HipChat, one of those things right, is, is, right. A, is a great tool to sort of have uh, to connect the entire now, organization. Did you guys build custom hooks into Slack or were you using yeah. other things? Yeah, and it's really things? easy to do too. It's not, it's not at all, I mean, if you're a software engineer, it's very easy. You know, it's not everything we do, that's every new product feature, it all gets a connection to Slack and it's, it's super easy. They make it really easy to do. That's really neat, really neat. Okay. And the other second, one, though, uh, second Asana. Question. Um, everyone is loving podcasts these days, right? Just like this, I think, uh, the rise of Netflix, et cetera, uh, everyone's consuming content on demand. What podcasts are you listening to these days to get up an edge in entrepreneurship and business and life? So there's two podcasts that are great. One is uh, Anderson Horowitz podcast. I think it's AZ360 is the name of it. Um, always great, always great guests, great content. Uh, and the other is the Startup Podcast, which is Alex Bloomberg, Glim Gimlet Media. Everything Gimlet does is great, but the Startup Podcast is is terrific. They just started their third season, uh, and they've been profiling all different companies. I think they did uh, a Twitch recently, yep. uh, which is great. Um, so a really great podcast, and Alex is is really done a lot for podcasting i think in terms of the production value it's pretty it's pretty great stuff that's awesome and the last question is uh, people that's listening in today if they want to get a hold of you blake what's the best way and method that they can do that always email blake at inboxhealth.com is great um, but also twitter uh, at blake zero walker um, or at inbox health both are are actually me uh, so yeah any of those are, are great ways to get in touch um uh, and we're always trying to, to be open to, to contact and communication. Awesome. Thank you so much. There you have it, folks. We've got Blake Walker, co-founder and chief product offer of, officer of Inbox Health. Thank you so much for spending time with us today, Blake. I know it's very busy up there in Connecticut with your team and really appreciate getting a peek inside of your company today. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for having us. And Glad so everybody it. else, if you want to learn more about this startup and others, I invite you to visit our website at VentureClash.com. That's also the place you'll learn about the $5 million Venture Startup Competition this year that's going on right now for you if you're interested in the digital health, um, insure tech, and uh, fintech spaces. I invite you to check that out, figure out what the 
Details of the competition are uh, their applications are being taken right now. Um, that's all available for you at VentureClash.com. Till next time, I'm Kenny Jang, host of the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning into today's episode of the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Drop by www.VentureClash.com as to learn about the $5 million Venture Clash Startup Challenge. We've set aside millions to support your innovation and product offerings. Venture Clash is also the place where you'll find the resources you need to help grow your business. Check out the contest at www.VentureClash.com today.